is get a great lawyer. Call the strong arm, attorney John Voy and associates. Unfortunately, accidents will happen, and that's why we're here to help you anytime, anywhere you need us. WJBF News Channel 6, honoring black history. The Live Piper 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Temperatures are on the rise, but changing in the forecast starting this weekend. I'll have all the details for you coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 and 4, two young lives lost in a house fire in Richmond County. We'll update that investigation. Plus, is the process for getting speed humps getting easier in Augusta? We'll check it out. And we're going to take a look at two men who actually inspired city leaders to name roads after them. Your news at 4 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 4. I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thank you so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins with a tragic story in Richmond County. Two children are dead after an overnight house fire. It happened at a home on Moore Road that's just off Mike Padgett Highway. Kim Vickers reports. It's sad to see what I see, but, you know, I really want to see all that, but I kept up all night. You know, it got me a little shook up. It was just after 1 o'clock Thursday morning when Presley says he woke up to the chaos going on at his neighbor's home. I heard this yelling, screaming and stuff like that. I ignored it for a minute, but then I said, like, something really happening out there. And I heard somebody screaming, you know. I said, well, maybe they're fighting out there, you know. I, I got to go to work. I ain't got time for that. Shortly after, he heard sirens coming into the neighborhood and decided to take a closer look at what was going on. So I looked out. I still didn't see nothing. I seen the fire truck up front. I looked to the back of my kitchen window, and I seen this big blaze of fire. So I jumped up, I put clothes on me, and I said, I need to get that water hose to go with my land for the fire to come over. When firefighters arrived, they say flames were shooting out the windows and doors. Once the fire was put out, sisters 10-year-old Tyasia Clifford and 7-year-old Aubrey Williams were discovered dead in a bedroom. Their mother and 13-year-old sister were able to escape. Several other neighbors we talked to spoke highly of the family, and like Presley, all of them are still dealing with the shock of how something so tragic could hit so close to home. I reached out to the family. I know it's hard for them, and I feel the pain myself. And sorry to you. I'm a little shook up right now. In Augusta, Kim Vickers, WJBF, News Channel 6. No, Presley, we're all a little bit shook up, a lot shook up. Thanks for talking to us today. We appreciate it. News Channel 6 took some time today to reach out to local child mental health experts about how things like this can impact friends and classmates, those little ones. Tyasha and Aubrey went to Richmond Hill K-8 through school. There's Hannah Latier live from the campus with more. Hannah. Brad, when this type of tragedy strikes, coping with the grief can be difficult, especially for children. Experts say knowing how to console them can make a difference. First, they say validating their feelings and to not be afraid to use words like death and dying. Letting them express their grief through play, such as coloring, can also make it easier for them to share their feelings. If your child is scared about the tragedy possibly happening to them, show them how you'll keep them safe and who will be there to help if it were to happen. In some cases, speaking to a professional could be the best option. Some kids initially will have problems sleeping um, or a hard time concentrating in school. If that's something that lasts you know, longer than a few weeks, that's, that's where I would want parents to talk to their pediatrician about, about um, additional measures that, that might help support their child. Hal tells me every person and child can handle grief differently, and it's important to know the different ways to help them. We'll have additional resources and information at WJBF.com. Live in Augusta, Hannah Latier, WJBF News Channel 6. It is time now to take a look at the weather. Meteorologist Sherry Sheely standing by with that. Sherry. Yes. Good to see y'all and good to see you at home. I hope you've enjoyed this Thursday. It's been a little bit warmer today, but also the clouds have definitely increased. We look at our Cherry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cams. Got a quite quite the blanket of clouds.
clouds right now, but the good news is they're all high level clouds and fair weather clouds. So overall, it's been a pretty nice day. We can see those clouds on our satellite radar. Even though high pressure is in the neighborhood, we still have that cloud cover just kind of funneling into the area. And as that high pressure system moves off the coast, we'll start to see an even bigger increase in clouds as we go towards the weekend. Temperature rise right now, we're in those upper 50s to 60s. We've got 58 in Aiken, 51 in Marmel, 58 in Gibson. So nice warm temperatures just a few degrees warmer than yesterday and we're going even warmer than that winds nothing much to worry about there anywhere from light to variable winds as you plan out your evening gonna need a light jacket once the sun goes down we'll drop into those upper 50s and overnight tonight you'll see an increase of clouds but it won't be near as chilly as it was last night only seeing overnight lows right there at 40 so we are warming on up but also those clouds are increasing and rain is returning to the forecast. I'll have all the details on what you can expect in your full forecast coming up. Still ahead, we are taking a look at the history of two famous names in Augusta that you may notice on buildings and streets. What they did to be a part of the local landscape forever. Washer dryer pair is only $699.98. Or this Samsung Galaxy Unlocked smartphone is alone $99.99. Only at Brands Mart USA. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live Fiber 6. It was a chilly start to the day this morning, but we've warmed up pretty nicely, had some sunshine, some blue skies, and started with just a few wispy cirrus clouds, but now we've got quite the layer of cloud cover. Right now, looking at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Sky View Cam outside of Television Park, but even with the clouds, we've warmed up quite nicely. We're at 59 degrees here in Augusta. Winds coming from the southeast at three miles per hour. How do we stack up across the nation? Well, we're in pretty good company there, so also 59 in Raleigh, 57 in D.C., of course, it's warmer in the Sunshine State in the 70s, but back to our west, notice those cool, cool temperatures up in the Rockies where it's also snowing right now. But for us, just that cloud cover, that's the only white stuff we've got to look at on our satellite and radar. As you can see, those clouds just kind of funneling in from the Gulf. Even though we've got high pressure that's in control of our weather, usually when you have the high pressure, you do have, you know, clear skies. But since it's receding to the north, that cloud cover is going to start to build in even more overnight tonight and into your Friday. But we've got the clouds, but we're going to stay nice and dry for the next couple of days. Our next rain chance not coming in until super late Saturday night and into your Sunday and your Monday. But then we will dry out just in time for Valentine's Day next week. So let's look at our future cast to see how this plays out. So there's that high pressure that continues to push off the coast as we go through the overnight hours and into the morning for your Friday. Then notice Friday, the clouds continue to move in. Have some sprinkles to our north, but we will stay nice and dry in our neck of the woods throughout the day Friday and into Saturday. The good news is Friday night into Saturday morning, we will see a break in the clouds, so we'll get to enjoy a little more sunshine moving into Saturday. But then as we go through the day Saturday, those clouds will continue to increase, and there comes our next weather maker from the west that will move into our area late in the evening, Saturday, and into your Sunday and Monday. But for tonight, it's going to be cloudy, so it's going to keep temperatures a little more on the milder side, only going to make it down into the 40s, so no more chilly mornings for the next couple of days. And then tomorrow, we are warming on up, looking at highs in the upper 60s to even those lower 70s tomorrow, even with the cloud cover. So yeah, we are on the upward trend of things with the temperature, and we're even going higher for Saturday, back to the 70s. Then with the rain, we'll be back into the lower 60s for Sunday and Monday before we dip back right to average temperatures the beginning of next week. So your 10-day forecast looking pretty good. Things are rather calm for the next couple of days. Just some cloud cover and warm temps, but then you're going to need to break out that rain gear starting on Sunday and into Monday. Sherry, thanks. We appreciate it. Up next, we're going to preview one of the most anticipated halftime performances. A live report from the big game in Las Vegas when we come back. I'm attorney Jamie Mann. I just love that Southern Soul and Song. The CSRA's favorite views app is now even better. With easier access to local views, whether it's streaming video, download the News Channel 6 mobile app. What do Michael Jackson, NSYNC, The Who, and Prince have in common? They're all music legends, but it's the Super Bowl halftime show that really connects them. Oh, what a connection that is. And now one R&B legend is joining their ranks. He spoke about it today, Crystal Rich. And 
official member of the News Channel 6 family at this point, covered the <laughs> halftime show news conference, and she's live outside at Legion Stadium with the story. Hey, Crystal. Hey, Crystal. Brad and Jenny, honored to be part of the family. Usher, <laughs> a.k.a. Usher, gave us his confessions on the Super Bowl halftime performance. And oh, 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 my God, this is going to be so good. Now, we always appreciate his inside look because if you're going to tell it, then you've got to tell it all. He is an absolute superstar. He has so many hits, but this is Las Vegas, so you can probably expect him to be on stage with a couple of bad girls. Yeah, Usher is so diverse in what he is able to do. You know, he makes you want to take it nice and slow, but you also know he also makes you want to get up and dance as well. He is the king of trading places and doing both. I wish that I could watch this performance with my boo, but if you guys are watching from home, make sure you turn your cell phones all the way down. You don't have to call so you don't miss a second of this performance. We heard from Usher. Here he is. I wanted to put on a show that I felt would represent my idea of creativity. What I've been able to do is bring a great deal of Atlanta and the melting pot that it is, uh, musically, culturally, uh, to, to Las Vegas. Um, you know, that is the source that has been fueling me for these years creatively. So why not make certain that the rest of the world, rather they're seeing me for the first time, or either they're celebrating because we've been you know, listening to me, you've been listening to my music from, for these years. Brad and Ginny, if you guys are Usher fans and really exciting news, he announced that he is dropping a new album tomorrow. It is his ninth solo studio album. It's called Coming Home. He also announced a tour called Past, Present, and Future to celebrate and to promote his new music now i dropped a lot of his song titles in my report i hope you guys are able to pick out and name a few oh we got those crystal yes indeed that was absolutely <laughs> awesome it was the whole catalog i think it was, it was great beautifully done thanks so much well do you ever drive down a road or pass a building that was named after someone and wonder who that person was Kim Vickers takes a look at two of those names you often see, C.T. Walker and R.A. Dent. Reverend Charles Thomas Walker was born into slavery near Hepzibah in 1858. His father died just before he was born, and his mother died eight years later. Historian Joyce Law says the Reverend's mother instilled in her children the importance of education. He has the great opportunity to attend Augusta Baptist Institute, which we now know as Morehouse. Walker graduated and was ordained as a minister. In 1885, he founded Tabernacle Baptist Church. His fame as an orator and civil rights activist brought him a great deal of respect from prominent people, people like Booker T. Washington, John D. Rockefeller, and President William H. Taft traveled to Tabernacle to hear him preach. Walker also had an entrepreneurial spirit. So that everywhere he goes, he starts something. He's in LaGrange. He starts LaGrange Academy in New York City, the Harlem YMCA, and then here in Augusta, the Negro uh, Fair, Tabernacle Old Folks Home. One of Walker's lasting legacies was Walker Baptist Institute, a private boarding school for African American men. Richard Algernon Dent was a student there. So one of the people who had an opportunity to, would have been able to see Reverend Walker in action was R.A. Dent, for whom he was baptized by and then later becoming a deacon of the, of the church. A successful businessman, Dent was elected to the Georgia House of Representatives in 1966. Almost 100 years after Thomas P. Beard as Augustus, first African-American representative is ejected out of the Georgia Assembly. And so this was part of the great legacy that it took that long of a period to have an African-American to be elected back to the Georgia Assembly. Dent was well-respected, earning the nickname Papa Dent. Representative Dent is one of three African-Americans whose picture is placed in the Georgia Dome. Ari Dent Boulevard and Laney Walker Boulevard in Augusta are named after the two men. In 2016, Historic Augusta bought the home Reverend Walker lived in. Eric Montgomery with Historic Augusta says that over the next six years, the organization worked to stabilize the structure. We re uh, replaced the roof. We worked on the front porch, which was actually condemned by then. Uh, the, the house was sagging, so we worked on the, on the uh, foundation to, to stabilize that. 
Um, we repaired the siding. We painted it. Two years ago, Historic Augusta sold the C.T. Walker House to the Augusta Land Bank Authority as part of the revitalization of the Laney Walker neighborhood. Uh, it, it needed to be remembered. This house needed to be saved. And that's just part of your hometown history. In Augusta, Kim Vickers, WJBF, News Channel 6. AAA unveiled its Black History Month road trip tour guide, and Augusta has several stops on the list. Sites on the tour include the Lucy Craft Laney Museum, the Augusta Riot Historical Marker, Springfield Baptist Church, the James Brown Monument and Mural, and the Morris Museum of Art. The route also includes charging stations for drivers with electric vehicles. We really help people to appreciate, hopefully ease their fears, their anxieties, that they can go to these historical sites throughout the state of Georgia. They can do so. And, uh, and to aid them uh, in that course, uh, they can uh, avail themselves to the growing infrastructure uh, that you see uh, in the state of Georgia as far as the tour guide maps out historical sites of black history throughout Georgia and South Carolina. An Augusta neighborhood is getting a big bump to slow down traffic. After neighborhood complaints, 12 speed humps have been approved for Farrington Drive. This year, commissioners approved $140,000 for speed humps across the city. This allows $14,000 for each district. The cost for Farrington is about $54,000, though. I want to be able to use uh, whatever funding I have for in District Three for speed humps, um, which I, I don't think I have. like. I say I don't I don't recall having twelve speed humps in District Three. So for one road, that's a lot. <laughs> City traffic engineers say money from last year is being used for the Farrington speed humps, so each commissioner still has their allotment for this year. Efforts to protect the Olive Road overpass coming too little, too late. Wednesday, remember we told you about that large beam knocked off the bridge after a truck hit it, trying, of course, to get under it? Several weeks ago, Commissioner Wayne Guilfoyle proposed putting padded chains at bridge height so the top of the truck would hit those. They didn't take any action, though. Traffic engineer was supposed to get a call stand. Administrator was supposed to be bringing it back before us, but it's a little too late for it now. Hopefully, we can put it in place before the bridge opens back up and you know it'll be worth just to keep this from happening again the off road bridge going to be closed until repairs are complete csx says that work could take up to three months time to meet another candidate for the upcoming race for a local seat in the georgia house john Turner. Coming up, why some employers are already preparing for the day after the Super Bowl. Yeah, the story behind that day is that trip. That... When you call my office, you get the 957. Now, we all know about the big game this weekend, but have you heard of Super Sick Monday? Oh, yeah, it's when lots of people call in sick and take off work the day after the Super Bowl. The push continues to make that Monday after a national holiday. Since 2017, in fact, Change.org has gotten petitions calling for businesses and schools to close. So far, though, it's been a no-go. But that doesn't stop people from making it their own unofficial holiday. A new Harris poll says close to 16 million employees are expected to miss work come Monday. Oh, my word. <laughs> the game's over at like nine. Just go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. <laughs> Uh, and take some Alka Seltzer. Yep. There's more coverage you can count on at 4 30. We are going to let you know about renewed efforts to legalize medical marijuana in South Carolina. A bill fast tracked for a debate on the state Senate floor. Next.